Mark Merrill able to kick out of that. Merrill's a tough, gutty young man. Austin now, what's he gonna do with Merrill? How's he up? Drives him down. And again, the knee to the rib area. Everything very deliberate, very methodical, as we pointed out, and very oh, high cover. impact. One, two, and another kick out by Mark Merrill. You know, as much as I don't like Mark Merrill one bit, I do have to give him credit. He's got a lot of heart because most men would not have recovered from that kind of a beating. Wow, man, Mark Merrill. Swing. What's this? I don't know. No, that Boston crab coming up. More damage to the back, and that can do it right there. Submission maneuver here. Well, right. man, Mark Merrill trying to hang on. There's nothing that Sable can do for Mark Merrill. Stone Cold's got him right in the center of the ring, but being the no. gutless, being the gutless oh, quitter that he is, he's trying to go to the ropes. He's a quitter. Wow, man, Mark Merrill trying to hang on. Stone Cold Steve Austin intent on inflicting punishment to his opponent. The lower Merrill, back. Merrill trying to make a move here. And Merrill looks at, whoa, how about that? How about that? Hardy says, whoa. Wild oh, man, Mark Merrill. Breaking the hold, but uh, unfortunately. Oh, small package, wait a minute, one, two, he got him. No, he didn't. Oh. Oh. That was so close. That was a fast count, too. Stone Cold Steve Austin with Mark Merrill on his feet, maybe not for long, though. And now, again, Austin steps it up yet another notch. Now, unfortunately, Steve Austin has got to get on Mark Merrill. He's got a lot of heart and a lot of fire, Merrill does, and Steve cannot allow that to happen. He's got to get on him when he's got him down and put him away fast. This is the king of the road. Stone Cold Steve Austin driving the foot into the lower abdominal area. And it would seem that Austin has had several uh, occasions here in which he perhaps should have gone for the cover, but did not. What's this? Again, same yep. maneuver. Austin Chris, time he's putting even more pressure on it. The lower back has been the focus of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin seemingly going, wanting to go for a submission victory as opposed to a pinfall victory. And while Mark Merrill is breathing in pain, poor Sable can just sit there and look homely and try to provide some support, but it's not enough. Look homely? Look Please. homely, I didn't stutter. And, well, well, man, Mark Merrill, with a capacity crowd, very much with him. Merrill trying to make the same move he made. No, no, look at that. Wait a minute, shoulders are down. Two, he got him. No, he didn't. And driving, wait a minute, one, two, Oh, a series of near falls back and forth there. Wild man Mark Merrill almost pulling up a big upset. Merrill, to the, oh, to the buckle. Sternum first. Oh, uh, no, look at this. Wild man Mark Oh, my God, that's what he used to beat me. Two, it's got him. Oh. No, he doesn't. See, unlike when he did it to me, he held oh. my trunks. A right hand by Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't recall him pulling your trunks, Owen. He certainly did. That's like blaming the Johnstown flood on a leaky faucet in Altoona. It didn't happen. You weren't there, Jim Ross. You weren't in the ring. You didn't feel him grabbing my tights. Set up now for the ride. No reversal. Coming off. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And now a sticker over the clock. Oh, no. Devastating maneuver. Austin and drove his own head right into Merrill's jaw. A modified version of his finishing maneuver, the Stone Cold Stunner. And I'm not so sure that, uh, that Austin didn't have his tongue jarred as well. Austin bleeding from the mouth now. Stone Cold Steve Austin, wild man Mark Merrill. Highly competitive match up here, kicking things off in. Look at that maneuver. A high risk maneuver, he had no idea whether Stone Cold was right behind him or not. That was tremendous. I think they, they struck heads there. The All right, here we go. Back down. Both men up on their feet, maybe not for long. Off the rope. Stone Cold missing with the elbow. Drop kick. Oh, caught him right in the jaw. As the pace quickens, the wild man gets stronger. That's what he's all about. That quick, out of control pace. Well, what the King of Ring is all about is endurance. And right now, Mark Merrow is showing that he had endurance. He sustained oh. the beating that was given to him, and now he's giving it back to him. He certainly is. And again, the mouth of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Bloodied, although there, Merrill was going high on the forehead with those punches. Coming off now, and a back body drop. You can feel the momentum building here. Yes, it has shifted, no doubt about it. Here we go. Well, man, Mark Merrill on the top, and he, yeah! Double axe. That could do it. We have one. We have two in. No. Oh, 
Mabel was going to celebrate. She was ready to celebrate. Oh, my. Nothing doing, not yet. Two great competitors. Here comes Wild now. Right into the boot. Austin having a presence of mind to raise that boot. Right into the jaw. And wait a minute, here we go. Over the top to the boot. Yeah. Oh, oh hit his Did back for him. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Watch the wild man. Look out, here comes Ball with back there. And again. Put it back. High risk maneuver, a somersault plancha by wild man Mark Merrow on a bloodied Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin and Merrow giving it their all here tonight. Live in Milwaukee at the Mecca Arena. Let's go back, take another look. at the risk that we're talking about. Wild man will take. Back to live action, there's another one. And so far, these risks are paying off for wild man Mark Merrow. These risks aren't gonna get him anywhere outside the ring. He's gotta get him in the ring and pin him one, two, three to get on to the next round of the King of the Ring. That's exactly what he's doing. not gonna do him any good. He must have heard you. Here we go. Wild man Mark Merrill with Stone Cold Steve Austin back in the ring. Can Merrill polish off Stone Cold and drop kick from way above? That should be it. We Could very well be it. One, two, two. Oh, no. no. I'll tell you something. That that dadgum off is tougher than shoe leather because that would have, that normal man would have been out for that drop kick off the top. Intestinal fortitude, and that's what it's all about, king of the ring. It's going to take a Mack truck to put Steve Austin down for a three count. Stone Cold Steve Austin being set up now. Look at this. Put right on the top rung of the ladder. Right hand, right in the chops there by wild man Mark Merrill. What's this? Going all the way up. High risk number again. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Now's the time. Shoot the half, get him over, now's the time. Yeah, here we go. One, two, and he got it. Oh, he didn't get it. He left didn't shoulder. It. The left shoulder came off the canvas at about two and a half. Oh. I put to the midsection. Uh oh, wait a minute. Knocked him right in the solar plexus in the setup here. Way up here, look at that. All right across the throat. The throw to Wild Man Mark Mell. Right across that top rung of the ladder, the top rung of the cover. One, two. Oh! Oh, no. Only two. Austin loves that maneuver. It's a hot shot like maneuver by Stone Cold. The momentum has certainly changed now. Look at who's on top, Jim Ross. Stone hey, Cold. Wait a That's, That's it. That's it. Can he put him away? One, two. He got he it. it. Stone Cold Steve Austin. What a battle. And this very first match opening up the King of the Ring. The Wild Man takes the feet for the first time at the hands of Stone Cold and the Stone Cold Stunner. Unbelievable match, unbelievable move. It's the very move that put Savio Vega out of the King of the Ring. He beat him with that. Mark Merrill must not have done his homework because he just got defeated by the same move. All right, let's take another look here. Look at this. A set up now. Watch. Wild man Mark Merrill goes way up, and look at that. Oh, my goodness. From our vantage point, that top rope is right across the throat of wild man Mark Merrill. And then, look, after that, that stunner, which is a tremendous impact right on the jaw, the cover, the victory for Stone Cold Steve Austin. And there you have a gallant young man who has a great reputation here in the world. Well, let me see. Great reputation and a great future, no doubt, here in the World Wrestling Federation. There you see what we have now is Jake the Snake Roberts against the man they call Vader. One of those individuals will face Stone Cold Steve Austin. Let's take you back now to Doc Hendricks. Doc? All right, Jake. Obviously the sentimental favorite here in the King of the Ring tournament. You've overcome a lot of obstacles in your life, but the largest one is looming in front of you now. The 450-pound Vader stands in the way of your quest to become King of the Ring. You know, I was blind, but now I see. I was deaf, but now I can hear. You know, I was, my soul was purchased by the blood of the Lamb. But So how can I lose if I just go out there and know the power above is reaching down and lifting me up? Yes, 450 pounds is nothing you want to play with, and I don't plan on playing. But I'll tell you something. If I was going to rob a bank, I wouldn't walk in the front door. I'd sneak up from behind. It's time to get serious. If I can get by Vader, I know I got stone cold. Lord help me. I'm going to do it. Best of luck, Jake. Back to you, Vince and JR. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And 
Here comes the Mastodon of the World Wrestling Federation. You talk about a bully. This man is a personification of that term. He is a bully, yeah. Some like him. Most don't. Vader, how did Vader get here? How did Vader get to the king of the ring? Here we go. Patrick Ahmed Johnson wants him. And who's going to help out Vader? Well, I just want to say, Ahmed Johnson grabbed my manager. I ran in here to stop him from hitting my manager, yeah. and that's it. Oh, right. hard with that cast, driving it to the back of the head of Ahmed Johnson, knocked him out. That's how Vader got in. In addition to the fact that Goldust and the Warrior did not advance when they fought in the opening round of the King of the Ring, ladies and gentlemen. Neither individual advanced. Of course, that was a double count out, and that's the way Vader went all the way to the semis. I think Ahmed Johnson had that match won if it hadn't been for our colleague out here, Owen Hart, and that cast. You know what, Jim Ross, you think too much. So you just sit out here and commentate on the matches and don't speculate about my business. The man they call Vader against the 41-year-old. 51 or 61, I'm not sure. Jake the Snake Roberts, a man who's had a lot to say as of late about his past, about his past drug addiction, about his past lifestyle. He's turned things around. And ladies and gentlemen, he has an opportunity to indeed make a comeback of a lifetime. A stand in the World Wrestling Federation. Can Jake the Snake Roberts do it? At 41 years old, can he become the king Let me get something straight right now. He's 51 years old. He's still injured from his match with Justin Hawk Bradshaw. He's walking into this match hurt, and Vader is not the kind of guy that you walk into a match hurt. Let's go he's back. gonna inflict more pain Let's on. show you the way to Jake, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, three weeks ago, I guess on a hurt. DDT. Yes, sir. How effective is the DDT? Well, so effective. After that three count, we're gonna see it again. It's the difference maker. You see it right here after a grueling match with a very impressive Justin Hawk Bradshaw. Again, the DDT, the difference maker. Jake the Snake Roberts has cleared the ring with that pipe out and whoa, whoa, baby. Like I stated earlier, the king of the ring is about qualifying with endurance, and Jake Roberts does not have the endurance to get through Vader, for starters, or St Stone Cold Steve Austin. There's no way an old man like this can go through two matches in one night. There's yes, no way. Let's talk about the knowledge Jake the Snake has and those great psychological skills. Well, there's no doubt he does have a lot of experience and he is very uh, psychologically inclined, but he's an old man, bottom line. He's washed up. Massive he's a crowd here enjoying, ladies and gentlemen, the King of the Ring, and we certainly hope you are at home as well. The World Wrestling Federation on pay per view. Jake Roberts has won bigger battles, talking about drug oh. and alcohol abuse, but this is a 458 pound monster. Who's going to show us? just how big and just how bad he is. And as long as Vader has the advantage, he's the biggest bully in the yard. Well, and nobody knows him better than I do in Camp Cornette, but I will say this much. Oh. Jake Roberts' only hope is if he gets a DDT on Vader, but there's no way he's gonna get that massive man down with a DDT, there's no way. That's a nice arm bar takedown, a submission maneuver as Vader's trying to hyperextend Jake's elbow. And again, using all of his weight in a riding style fashion, the man they call Vader. And when you're around that 400 pound mark, you'll imagine it must feel like a ton on those joints. Set up for the ride now, Jake the Snake. Off the rope, oh, forget about it. As long as Vader is vertical, as long as Vader controls his vertical base, he is as deadly as anybody that's ever stepped inside the ring here in the World Wrestling Federation. Again, coming off the rope, oh, and again, Jake the Snake down to the canvas. Jake the Snake Roberts, oh! That's it, he's finished. It. We have two in it. No. I give him credit for an old timer. He's hanging in there, but it's only a matter of time. And I know in Camp Cornet we're all very close, and Vader and I, we talk strategy. I know exactly what he's going to do to beat Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, look at that. A book to the jaw. Vader hesitated just a moment, moving in in anticipation. And now Jake the Snake peppering Vader with a series of rights and lefts. Sets him up for the ride. Reversal now. Coming off and, oh, a nice knee left. That's where Jake wants him. He, Jake wants Vader down, and he's ready for the DDT already. Here we go. DDT coming in. No, Vader driving Jake the Snake in the corner. Uh oh look out. This is where Vader does his most damage. Look at this, hammering away and right down to the canvas, Jake the Snake Roberts. Didn't I tell you, Vader is too big of a man. Well over 400 pounds, 
There's no way Jake Roberts has the power to pull him down for that DDT. There's no way. Jake the Snake Roberts, ladies and gentlemen, would like to be known as the King of the Ring Award winner. He's never won a title here in the World Wrestling Federation in his long tenure, taking some three years off and now trying to make it back, trying to make it back to the top. I'm sure Jake Roberts' family, who has just got back together not that long ago, watching in Stone Mountain, Georgia, with some very anxious moments. His family not, they didn't really want Jake to come back to in-ring competition, but Jake had the burning desire to compete again, and that's why he's here. Okay, tell me this, that if Jake what? Roberts could oh. not win in his prime years ago, why would you think that he's got a chance now when he's only older and more oh, with a close line. Jake the Snake has never participated in a King of the Ring tournament before. This is his first coming off, and oh! Again, Vader. Well, if he couldn't win a title when he was at his best 10 years ago, he shouldn't even be in the match right now. Jake the Snake, never say never in the World Wrestling Federation. Well, Jake the Snake Roberts being set up. Vader has dominated the match. Here he comes in. Again, hesitating just a little bit. Take advantage, Jake. You got to take advantage now while you can. Here it comes, DDT. Yeah, I got it. You got it. Oh, my God. Oh, wait a minute. The official. Vader grabbed the referee going down. He never grabbed the referee. I didn't see that. I think he did. did. I think Jake Roberts shoved the referee out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the referee's the decision. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. He's a travesty. You can't look at Jim Cornette. He's enraged. Wait a minute. You can't manhandle a referee like that. My God, what an upset. Look out, look out. The match is over. Come on. Vader. Here he comes again. There's no reason for this. Vader. Lost this match as a result of a disqualification. He was going down to the DDT, grabbed the official, and brought him down with him. Whether it was inadvertent or not, I guess we'll never know, but the official made his decision. Vader's got a very bad temper, and I don't blame him. He's just been robbed of the king of the ring. He was one of the hopefuls, not an old washed-up has-been like oh, no. Jake Roberts. Wait. Now, wait a minute. Look at this. No, come on. Hurt him. Hurt him. Jake's helpless. He's helpless here. Down. Right into the ribs. Oh, boy. Well, he already had injured ribs previously, and what Big Van Vader has just done is totally destroyed Jake Roberts' chance of even going on to the next match in the King of the Ring. He's in no shape to go anywhere, except for to a hospital. Jake may have suffered some serious internal injuries. He's holding his side, he's holding his ribs and his lower abdomen here. He's done. And Vader, a real powder keg. Oh, wait a minute, look at that. He just shipped Cornette back. Vader's incensed. He had his heart set on winning the King of the Ring tournament. And now Vader's out of it as a result of a disqualification. He was robbed. Jake being helped back. And you might be right, Owen. Uh, Jake the Snake may not be in any condition to continue on, which would mean he can't even walk on his own. That Stone Cold Steve Austin would be uh, would be named the King of the Ring. Let's take you back and show you that DDT now, and you judge for yourself whether or not Vader intentionally grabbed the official. If we have the shot, here we go. Jake winds up. Look at this. Vader. He didn't grab the referee. When you're getting DDT, you're gonna fight for your life to get out of it, and the referee stood in his way and fell down. He was robbed. Vader was a hopeful to win this thing, and now he's been cheated. I don't blame him. I would have done it to Jake Roberts. I would have beat him even worse if I got cheated like that. This capacity crowd booing the man they call Vader. Well, there was a judgment call by the referee. Controversial to say the least. Let's take you back, ladies and gentlemen. Show you. Here we go. Look at this. Sonny's grabbed by Billy. Look at this. Protesting just a little too much as they found out later on.
Uh, Bush and Clinton. <laughs> he wasn't a great student, but he could scuffle, as they say. Or... Oh, he can. He can definitely do that. Question whether or not he's over something. Here she comes right now with a brand new cowgirl outfit on. Well, I can relate to that. I'm a Slammy Award winner. I know Sonny. She was a multiple Slammy Award winner. But the question is, can she keep these smoking guns as a champion? Sonny, out here with the smoking guns. And uh, now, wait a minute, earlier on, you were chastising Sable for joining us. But if you don't mind Sonny joining us out here at ringside, what's the difference? Well, let's wait till the match starts. She hasn't done anything wrong. There's nothing wrong Sable walking around the ring. Either. She is the manager of the Smoking Guns, who are champions. Yeah. And I'll certainly say she's done a lot more work than uh, that uh, Sable, because uh, I don't see any title around Mark Merrill's waist. Matter of fact, he left the ring a loser tonight. I'm very disappointed in the Smoking Guns. Earlier today, I saw them at the hotel, and they refused to sign a couple of young fans' autographs. A couple of Smoking Gun fans that had their hats on and everything, and wouldn't even sign an autograph. I Jim find that Ross, rather appalling. Why don't you shut up? They got a title match. Don't you think they got better things on their mind than to sign autographs for a bunch of snot-nosed little brats? Of course they're not signing autographs. They're focused on these smelly, stinky, rotten hillbillies. Well, let me tell you something about these hillbillies, as you call them. We're talking about rugged individualists for sure, and together I'll tell you the Godwin family, ladies and gentlemen, oh, somebody's gonna get slopped. Could it be Sonny? Look at this. Henry and Phineas is cowering behind. Look at Sonny. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hold wait on, a minute. Hold on, hold on. That's Billy with the mic. Phineas. You know, there's been a lot of things on your mind lately. But I know the one thing that has just eaten you alive. And that is, I've made her feel like you will never be able to make her feel. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe oh, come that. On. And from the bark from behind, that's all it was. It a setup. Oh, Phineas was set up. Bart now with Phineas and slapped him down to the camp. Why not capitalize on an idiot? He's a stupid fool. They capitalized on it, and that's what it's all about to be a winner. Tactics. The smoking guns, Billy and Bart against the Godwins. And Phineas calling for yet another prank. And a tag was made. Here comes Billy. Can't imagine Billy would say something like that to Phineas and say it to his face. Look at Billy, hammer away. Look at this. Just hammering Phineas all the way down. Look at this. Make no mistake about the athleticism of the smoking guns. Three times they've held the tag team gold. And as our colleague knows, Owen Hart, it's very, very difficult to hold it at least this one time. Well, I understand that because not only did I defeat the smoking guns, I did all the work, even that fat slob Yokozuna was my partner. Oh, uh, please now, come but on. But the smoking guns, they were the same team that defeated us. So uh, they are definitely top. Champions. Wait a minute, Phineas there, right on the money. Look at this, Atta Phineas. Boy. Oh yeah, Phineas hammering away. Look at this, Phineas going to work on Billy Gunn. Here comes Bart to help out. Phineas. Uh -oh. Phineas is having one of those spells, I think, as he calls him. Look at this. And Billy trying to get out of there, and he's hauled out. He pulled his boot right off of him. And risking disqualification now. He's not Phineas. on there. He's definitely, uh, he's a little bit stupid, or a lot stupid, he's, actually. He's in a Razorback rage, I think. And he's got a temper. I've seen he him fly out like this. And justifiably, standing by, we're told, ladies and gentlemen, that, do we have Cloudy? Of all people, I think Cloudy is watching his back. Cloudy, how are you? And uh, welcome to the World Wrestling Federation. We, we, those of you who didn't join us uh, for the free-for-all, this is Cloudy, the new manager of the Body Donnas, some 5,000, uh, Entries and congratulations on your uh, becoming the Body Donna's manager. Well, thank you, Mr. McMahon. And, uh, the outfit you're wearing is uh, on, similar man. to those that, uh, uh, that Sonny has worn in the past. Uh, you have the same tailor? Well, I'd like to say that I fill it out a little more than Sonny. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, and the best of luck to you in your future here. Well, thank you, Mr. McMahon and JR. This is for you. Whoa! She oh. blew a kiss to you, What's JR. Thank you very I think much. she likes you. I'm a happily married man, I'll have you know. Yes. She's not my type, I can assure you. Uh, I don't know, you've been oh, flirting with her. This. She blew you a kiss. What's the matter with him? And Sonny apparently having no effect on Phineas. 
at least not in this matchup, not thus far. Oh, my goodness. Henry Godwin in there now against Bart. Here we go. Bart with a charger. Ball oh, right into the boot. A brogan right into the jaw. Oh, oh, what impact. Bart cover. One, two, and no, kick out. These smoking guns are rugged, but I don't know if they are as rugged as uh, the Godwins. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They mean business. Wide open now. Phineas right back in with a little momentum. We're seeing the Godwins a little bit more continuity here, making more frequent tags and keeping Bart Gunn in the Godwins half of the ring. And Hillbilly Jim, the manager of the Godwins, has them focused. And I think that the biggest thing here is that Phineas is not focused on Sonny. Well, we know what happens when Phineas does that. I mean, that it's all bad news. Henry Godwin. Applying the pressure on the left arm. And Sonny screaming. All right, we've got Henry now riding. Bart Gunn. Bart trying to make a move, trying to get off the mat. Henry with a decided weight advantage and perhaps a strength advantage as well. Sets him up off the rope, missing with the left hand. Oh, but, oh did you see that? Behind the officials back, Billy, nailing. The See what I mean? Right in the back. See what I mean about the smoking guns? I mean, come on, Billy. Again, Jim Ross, I think that's a questionable call. I think he ran into his boot, oh, and I think it was very come unintentional. On come on. The official warning Billy got. Well, that's a, a very, very stern stomp of the ribs by Billy Gunn, and Henry Godwin is in a lot of trouble here right now. Henry snapped over. Billy drops the knee. Billy and Bart got cover to it. Only two. You know, I think Sonny has brought something out of these smoking guns that I didn't see before. They're a lot more aggressive. They're a lot more hungrier than they were when they were walking around just trying to be friendly good boys. They, they're a lot tougher now. Drag was made. Bart, the legal man in the ring. This momentum all started with that cheap shot. If we have it, we'll show it to you, the double feature. A cheap shot earlier on. There it is. Watch this now. Watch Billy. Referee's back. His turn, and right there. Look. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's hard to tell. Go ahead and explain it. Go ahead, Owen. Well, from that angle, it's really hard to tell. From that angle. Oh, oh, like cover one, two, and he goes. Look at the arrogant cover of Bart Gunn. Now, here to four, the Bart Gunn would have cinched up on a leg. Right. It would have been a great lateral press. Instead, it was all arrogance. A very conceited one. Bart Gunn. Well, two. No doubt right. about that, that it was a big mistake. He's got to hook the leg. But again, Ross, you know, you speak too much. You haven't actually been in the ring, and you ought to keep your comments to yourself. Wait a minute. Now, this is your first opportunity out here in terms of broadcasting on pay-per-view. I mean, McMahon, how many I, slams I, I have hear, you ever won? I don't hear Jim Ross putting you down. All right, here we go. Coming out there. Oh, the telegraph maneuver there. And Billy Gunn capitalizing. They are quick, both guns. Billy perhaps a bit quicker even than Bart. Oh, cover! Two and he, No, and again, a left shoulder. Again, oh. they got to hook the leg, though. That's, that's basic wrestling. You have to hook the leg. The guns, Billy and Bart, far more aggressive now than they ever were prior to uh, having Sonny join their forces, and look at this. That's exactly what I was trying to say, but Jim Ross, you try to argue with me about that. They no. are certainly a lot more aggressive than before Sonny came around. And the knee just holding him there with all the weight. And look at this, look at this. And Bart got applying more and more pressure. Look at him, he's squealing like a pig. And Henry may be missing a few teeth. And uh, maybe missing a few marbles after this, if this continues. Look at Bart Gunn with those unsportsmanlike remarks to Hillbilly Jim. The smoking guns have transformed to a, a couple of Oh, less than desirable guys, thanks to Sonny. And look at this, verbal taunting. See what, they're wasting time here. Wouldn't you agree, Owen, that Bart Gunn's wasting a little time? Well, I would get on him a little more, but maybe.